We got some best moments here. I mean, this place changed my life. I mean, just going through the parking lot and then walking through the buildings, you know, visually seeing the same things, starts bringing back memories and like just a rush of emotions. Um, I love this place. This place is like my Graceland. The relationships, the high points of my career, like the moments where I feel like I really did some good work, um, all happened here. I was part of token integration efforts in the 80s, and so I ended up going across town to an elementary school that was majority white, being one of a handful of black kids in that school. Got a top-notch level of education, but also got a chance to understand you know, how racism operates in environments like that. But I know what it is to not be top-notch academic performer, not because you're not capable, but more so because you're not interested. And so I still carry that experience, right? It's like, as a teacher, I was always, I'm always an advocate for students, right? Because just to me, like, I, I just, I still identify with that. And so my responsibility has been to, you know, be who I needed when I was sitting in those desks. And so everything about my education philosophy is, is, is inspired by that. My, you know, love for, and, and, and compulsion toward equity, all of that stuff is born out of that experience. For me, equity deals with um, a different kind of equality. It's what Dr. King used to call genuine equality, where it's about equality of opportunities. Every segment of the population comes with different needs based on their different histories, based on their different cultures. You have to consider how all those things interact, especially when it comes to education. You can't ignore those things or simply paper over them by saying, we're going to treat everybody equally. Because if you treat unequally situated people equally, you'll have unequals. We noticed that race is a pernicious and stubborn sort of issue in North Carolina public schools and that whatever you're talking about, whether you're talking about cohort graduation rates, whether you're talking about EOG, EOC scores, whether you're talking about suspension data, uh, across the board, race continues to show up in a significant way that, you know, students of color lag behind their white peers in just about every category. I'm to the point now where I kind of believe that, you know, if we're going to make any sort of substantial change in society, it's going to have to begin with us. Our vision, right, our mission, I guess, is we work to combat the stereotypes that exist within popular media and popular culture, um, primarily for students who are Hispanic, Latino, Black. Understanding if you're watching a movie or understanding if you're watching a TV show or commercial, what are the messages that you're being taught about yourself? Like my team here, my group of students here, we try to affirm the culture, the identities of the students who are here. And helping them to produce whatever their outlet is, that's the goal, is to have them actually creating those things and being the creators of their own stories versus accepting someone else's narrative. And James is kind of the person who helped push me to be better every day and not give up on anything, on myself or them. So I literally just walked over to his classroom and I started crying. <laughs> and uh, I sat there in that classroom and I said, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm still the teacher, that's who I am. It's not necessarily what you do, but part of my job also is to pass the mic at this juncture and to make sure that like classroom teachers are the ones who are getting their voices heard and creating pathways for them to be able to take leadership roles and, and make, you know, make their perspectives and their insights heard. When I was teacher of the year and when I sat on the state board for two years, I certainly continued to bang that drum and to raise it as an issue um, simply because, you know, at that point, when I was on the board, heretofore, I hadn't heard anything about uh, equity or paying attention to gaps other than achievement gaps, right? But we know it's far greater than that, right? Uh, the situations are much more pervasive and more entrenched than just mere achievement. And so there are people that are at least beginning to talk about it. What I haven't seen is a large scale movement to help remedy some of the issues that we've seen. So we haven't moved from platitudes to kind of practical plans. I guess everybody has to have an entry point. Yeah. Then you need to assess like who your students are. If she's talking about relationship right. building, what if I did that at the beginning? Yeah. From day one, like you, you know need to start trying need. to figure out what, your, what their stories are. You're gonna have to teach them how to critique where they sit on uh, a spectrum of power, right? And that's, 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 the, that's the deeper equity stuff is, okay, how do I address the things that are going on right now? Make yeah. them interpreters of events, but then internalize that and say, that critical piece of where do I sit, right? 
why do you think that the you know why do you, the neighborhood has changed so much yeah. around here? Yeah. Why do you think the neighborhood has changed so much around Garrington? Why why do you think there's so much new construction? Right. Who are these houses for? Who has access? Right. Who doesn't? Right. Is it for you? What do you think the school is going to look like? Right? That's not being liberal or being conservative. That's, that's just being that's honest. What is happening. Right? Let's just teach them how to how to critique systems of power and where they sit on that continuum. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and where they sit on that on that stratification. That's important. That's an equity piece. You can't teach this stuff in a vacuum. This was my classroom the last two years. Right? This was the classroom I was teaching in when I was teaching here. But here's the thing. When I first got this classroom, there was no wall between this right here. So literally, I had a classroom with three walls. And she had the same deal. She taught English, I taught world history. And it was like this just partition, right? Made out of like, you know, basically like those built uh, bolts and boards with wheels on them. And we just had to find a, find a way to make it work. I laugh at that now because it's like, nobody knows how to adapt to change better than teachers, right? You just gotta find a way to get it done.